Hello everyone, this is Ashley from the Speedway Public Library and today I am going to show you about how to use Google Docs and how it can be used to create and save resumes. So the very first thing is you are going to want to be logged in to a computer, you're going to want to be online, and you are going to want to sign in to your Gmail account. Um, in order to use Google Docs, you do need a Gmail account. Once you are signed in, regardless of which Google page you are currently on, you can click the nine dots over here next to your initial, and that will bring up all the different Google applications that they have available. We are going to click the one that says Drive. Drive is like the cloud folder. It's where you can find all the different files that you have saved on your account. So we click Drive, and that brings us to our folders here. Um, you can see I have a couple different things that I'm working on, um, but for what we need, we are gonna go over here to the left-hand side where it says New, and click on that. Um, now in the drive, you have where you can upload files. If you have a resume that you've already worked on, that is where you could upload it to save it to your drive. Um, otherwise, we can create a new one. Um, Google has three different services that are similar to Microsoft Office applications. Um, Google Slides is like a PowerPoint presentation. Sla uh, Sheets is like Excel and Docs is like Microsoft Word. The arrows next to each of these applications gives you the option of starting from a blank, blank document or choosing one of the templates that Google already has. If you already have a format that you know and like for a resume, you are able to start that from scratch with a blank document. Um, I personally really like the different templates that Google has, um, so I'm going to show you those. So we're going to click from a template, and that will open up all the different ones that they have. Um, they have different, they have, I think, five different resumes. Um, they have letter formats. They have random things such as, you know, a recipe card or a pet resume. Um, and then also things for work such as project proposals, meeting notes, newsletters, brochures. Um, they even have some add-on ones by some other official places like LegalZoom. So if you need a non-disclosure agreement for some certain reason, there you go. They also have consulting agreements, uh, software development proposals, sales quotes, liability, uh, privacy policies, all different types of things on here. Uh, so that's why I really like Google templates because they have some really good ones um, for a lot of different things. So we're gonna take a look at these five resumes here. They're all slightly you know, different. Um, some of them have the two columns, some of them are just the one column, and then there's also the different sizes of like the names. Um, I personally like a two column, um, but I also don't really care for a large name. While you do want your name to be easily noticeable, um, you don't want it to overtake the entire page. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll take a look at this Spearmint template. So one of the things you'll notice is that there is already information placed here. But if you look closely, it is not all readable information. Uh, this is called lorem ipsum, and it is basically a filler um, of information. So with the Google template, they've basically put in examples of things you might need or titles of what it is. Um, so all you have to do is just highlight it using your mouse, you know, select and hold, and then move the mouse over, let go, and type in your name, uh, preferably first and last name. Um, with this specific template, you can also put in your title. So like for example, I'm the adult services librarian. And then you would also change this to be your address, your phone number, your email. The template also has a spot for your skills. Um, when writing these, 
I personally suggest making them very short and to the point. So for example, uh, oh, make sure there's a capital. Highly proficient in written and oral communi communication. So you don't want to make it long. Oh, I'm really good at talking with people. No, short and sweet. Highly proficient in written and oral communication. Um, you know, innovative. So very short keywords that explain what you are good at. Um, primarily job related. Um, though if you know another language, you could also put that on there as well. You also have your experience and your education. Um, with experience, they automatically give you, oops, two different uh, spots for your, or three different spots for um, your experiences. Um, you don't have to put three, you don't have to only have three, um, but it is always suggested that you put your most recent or current job first, followed by the jobs you had prior to that. Um, if you can make them some way, you know, keep the jobs that are most relatable or that might mean the most to someone looking at your resume. Um, if you only have one or two, that's fine. Um, just make sure, you know, you're filling it out to the best of your ability. Um, again, with this template, they already have the format that you need. So put the company. So for example, mine would be oops, the Speedway Public Library. And then location. I always put the city, comma, and then state, and then your job title. So if it is the current job, you would, again, use that same one that's up here. So adult services librarian. Sorry, I have a new keyboard. And then you also want to put the month and the date. So, you know. November of 2015 to present, etc. Um, and then again, the next one would be your job prior to that. In terms of the bullet points here, this is where you want to put what you did in that job, what your responsibilities were. Um, one thing that's important to remember is that you want to keep the grammar tenses the same. Um, so for example, two of my main responsibilities are maintaining the adult and teen collections and creating educational and cultural programs. So now you see I did maintaining, creating. You don't want to do maintaining and then created. Even if this is a prior job, you still want to keep those tenses the same. So maintaining, creating, uh, using, doing, assisting, um, for all those. Um, I generally keep the tenses same for the past companies as well. Um, though, as long as this one is present, it would be okay to do past tense on here. Um, education, you want to make sure that your most recent education is first. Um, so if you have a college degree, you'd want to put the highest one first. Um, if you just have high school, you'd want to put that. Um, if you just have a GRE, or not GRE, sorry, a GED, um, you would also put that here. So you would put what high school you went to, but then under degree, put GED. And then the last one that they have on here is awards. More than likely, as you're adding different skills to or different uh, responsibilities to your jobs, it this page is going to become longer, longer. So it is okay to delete that awards page, awards part if you don't have anything specific to put on there. Um, 
another thing I will say that is important is I would try to keep it as concise and short as possible. Um, it's always best to just have a one page resume rather than having multiple pages. So try to make it condensed as short as possible. If you need to change like the margins to make this a little bit you know, wider so it's, you know, comes up a little more, you can do that. Um, you can change margins over on this side, make the page come up higher. Let's see if it'll cooperate with me. Um, and then when it comes to when you're finished, um, one of the great things about Google Docs again is as you're typing something, if you look right up here where it says all changes saved in Drive, as you type, that changes to saving, oops, changes to, open. Oh, there it goes. Oh, luckily, because it's under recently used, I can just quickly reopen that. So as I was saying, as you change it, it goes to saving and then it's automatically saved. Um, so even if you close out the page and log back in, it's going to be um, saved and exactly right where you were prior. Um, let's say you make a change and you're trying to go back, you can't figure out what happened. Under file, there's also version history. And when you click see version history, it'll show you those edits that you've made. Um, so let's say you changed your resume and then you accidentally deleted everything. You can go back to that version history and it should show you um, what you had beforehand. Um, another thing, let's see. I'm gonna go back here. So again, clicking those nine dots and clicking drive, there is that resume that we've saved. And again, as long as you are logged into a device that has Google on it or has internet, such as a smartphone, um, a tablet, a computer, any of those that you're able to get onto Google and log into your Google account, you will be able to access that resume. Um, the last thing is printing. With Google, you can't directly print the document. Um, I'm not sure why they don't have that. And while some computers will have that print option um, in the actual tab themselves, or it'll be like up here, you don't want to click that. Um, it's not going to print correctly. So what you wanna do is click that little print icon that's right up here or hit control P. And that is going to ask you um, how you wanna save it. So I would generally click save as a PDF and then you'll save it. It'll ask you where you wanna save it and then you'll open it from there and print it from there. And that is about it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video or you can send us a message on Facebook or use the contact form on our website. Thank you for watching.